depending on your time zone. Mazichina Samoru is from Obingwa. Obingwa is in Adia State. And Mazichina Samoru is serving the indigenous people of Biafra in the Directorate of State. Today, 18th, I have decided to come on air so that we can be able to expose some of the crimes, the atrocities that are being committed against Biafrans on a daily basis. And the way forward, our people have to be very careful to see the ways the enemies are coming into our land. Today, the Nigerian police and the Nigerian military have launched a program, an operation called Keep the Southeast in Peace. But we all know they have not come to keep our Southeast in peace. They have decided to, before they, everybody know they used to come on Operation Python Dance, Operation Python Dance 1 and 2, and whenever they come with those operations, everybody know how they kill our people. The first Operation Python Dance, they came. The second one, they kill people in our leaders' um, uh, residence. And now they decided that they will come with Operation Keep the Southeast Peace. We know all these are all deception. Everybody should know that they the Fulani government have decided and they have given the order to shoot Biafrans at sight. You might not see people they will shoot on the streets, but they are kidnapping Biafrans all over in Biafra land. If you go to state CI in Nemo State, thousands of Biafrans used are being kept there and many people are being killed secretly. If you go to Adia State, the same thing. In Anambra, the same thing. In Delta State, the same thing. In Akwaibom, the same thing. They have continued to arrest our people who are traveling from one city to another. So as you are traveling, make sure you inform your families, make sure you inform your brothers, inform your wife, inform your friends when you are leaving home. Presently, we have three people that left Obibo. Igwocha going to Anambra, for a couple of days now, they are missing their telephone numbers. Nobody could be able to hear from them. We know they have been kicked out by the Nigerian military, either in Imo State or in Owere. Maybe they have killed them or they have kept them somewhere. People do not know. Also, our people should know that there is something that they are doing. The Nigerian justice system is on strike. It's intentional by the Nigerian government. Because they know the moment the court is working, we can be able to go for a uh, go for a bail application against our people they are holding in the prisons, against our people they are being detained illegally. But it is a plan by the Nigerian government. They want they don't want the judiciary to go back to work, so they can arrest as many people as they can, arrest people they want, and keep them in communicado. Maybe by the time the court will come back, many people might have died by that time. I'm also using this opportunity to tell our people, wherever you are, all those who say that they left the Nigerian military to join the ESN, to join the IPOB families, you have to be very, very careful because we found out that many of you are the most in IPOB. Many of you were bought by the Nigerian government and you came in to join the ESN, you came in to join IPOB families. If you know that you are among those people, you have to be very careful because we have taken a lot from you people. Every IPOB family member must be very careful of who is around him. Be very careful. Our leadership, the leadership of IPOB have warned people not to have any meeting. You can have your meetings online. There are many different ways to have meetings without having a physical meeting because all those modes are pointing out to those all those venues where people are having meetings any coordinator who will disobediently organize any meeting organize any physical meeting in biafra land even in other places not outside biafra land or in nigeria if anything happened to our people he will pay the consequences because he's risking the life of our people 
the Nigerian military, the Joint Tax Force, they have been moving from house to house, picking our people. Nobody is talking. The governors, they are coming out to tell they want peace. But the governors are not giving instruction to these security agencies to stop going to pick IPOB members in their houses. One thing is this. Most of them will tell you they want peace. But on the other hand, they are planning to kill IPOB members. In a Boji state right now, Dave Omahi is hunting IPOB members with his Bubago and the Joint Tax Force. They are killing our people in a Boji state. They are pointing hands to IPOB members and they are picking them. Also, some IPOB members have the they have now started having meetings with politicians in Ebony State. Because you think they have brought out money, you now want to sell your people because of money. This is the time we are warning every Biafran, every IPOB member. For those of you that have joined Ebubago, put in mind that you are joining Ebubago, the main purpose is to come to kill our people, to kill your own fellow brothers. We are fighting for freedom, and the freedom we are fighting is for everyone. But if you decide that the best way you can go, the governors who have, they have impoverished our people. We have no roads, no medical facilities, no, 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 we do not have anything that we can be proud of. The same politicians, the same governors who have called you from time to time to come and vote for them. Also, I'm using this opportunity to talk to our people within Aba and Obiwa. There is a particular military officer who is going to wear their car washes. They are picking up people who are taking, who are normally using marijuana, Igbo. They have gathered as many as many of them. They invited them to a place in Obiwa. I'm not going to mention the name of the place. Almost all those who are Igbo users, they organized them in a place. They gave them a military uniform. They gave them a shirt. They gave them a certificate. They provided as many drugs as they want for them. And they asked them that from now, they have been recruited into the army. They will be coming for training three times in a week. They gave them a certificate as somebody who had been recruited in the army and asked every one of them to go and take picture. Take a picture and you return the picture to them. Maybe they will send it to Abuja that they have recruited many people. If you are among these people, put in your mind that they have come to kill you. They are going to use you to kill your own brothers and sisters. Because of what you are using, because you have decided that Igbo is what we take away your life that is why but i know that some of them have withdrew some of them understood that they want to use them to unleash terror against our own people some of them the Igbo cleared in their eyes they withdrew back they said they are not very clear let me ask you is that the way to enlist somebody into the army have you asked yourself why are they enlisting you now into the army in this particular way the place they brought you people, those arms and ammunition that they kept there, who do you want to kill? Who do you want to kill with those ammunitions? Now they are training all of you. Who are you going to kill? Is there Boko Haram in the land? They are the Boko Haram. The Nigerian army is the, the, the people in the Boko Haram. They are the ones that have come down to our land to kill our people. So I am calling all of you, if your brother and sister who is using Igbo, those ones who are depending their lives on drugs. And you know you are among the people they have enlisted into this particular security. They tell you you are a federal security, a federal vigilante, give you an army uniform, give you a t-shirt, and handed you over a certificate. Take those things and return back to them. Tell them that they, you, they cannot use you to kill your brothers. Because one thing is this, the drugs that they are providing for you people, they are making sure that you guys are losing your senses. You are losing your senses and they will use you people as a tool against your own people. You might kill your brother, all those Igbo they brought for you, all those drugs that they brought for you, 
do you know exactly what is inside it is because of your long throat because you decided to use drugs to destroy yourself that is why they are coming through drugs and also i am calling our people we should stop consumption of these sachet hot drinks sachet hot drinks is where nigerian military are infusing many chemicals against our young men do stop taking sachet hot drinks this is where they are infusing those chemicals if you see people selling avoid taking those things. it's better you take ordinary family even if it is the local kai kai in your village it is better for you than all these sachet drinks these sachet drinks that they are selling they are using it to destroy our youth because most of them are being infused with chemicals that are affecting their me mental capacity. I am also using this opportunity calling our people who are sitting around playing draft, talking things you don't know about Biafra. You are risking yourself. You are risking your life. You are risking people around you. The Nigerian security, they are everywhere. They, some of them are in the uniform of uh, um, uh, NYC students. They are driving KK. They are coming up with all kind of, all kind of, they disguise themselves in any way. Some of them will raise topics, start talking in support of Biafra, keep away from them. Because the next thing they will do, they will pick you off, your family may not see you again. One thing we have to know, Biafra will come. All those things they are doing is the things they're supposed to do in a time of war. But we have to be very, very careful in what we are doing. The Nigerian military is going everywhere, harassing people. They were in Ben the last time. A police station by, was set ablaze by the unknown government. They, they went to Ben there. They arrested many young people. Nobody knows where they have taken those young people. Two days ago, I think Ben the people rose. And they protested about the way they are arresting their people. They move out from their place from Ben there. Now they moved to Uzakoli, Ozitem. Yesterday night, they said there was coffee. They were shooting all night in Uzakoli. The question is this. What is the Nigerian military doing in Uzakoli? What is happening in Uzakoli? Is there any problem in Uzakoli? But what I'm saying is that the people of Uzakoli must rise up because Uzakoli was where the, one of the fierce battles happened during the Biafra Civil War. The Fulanese do not forget they do not forget where the people were killed. They suffered a heavy blow in Uzakoli. Babangida can tell the story more better. And for that reason, as they are bringing war to our land, their first target, Uzakoli will be as some of their main target. About all these places you see them drafting in military people where there is nothing happening in those places. The youth in these areas, the elders in this area must rise up because the Nigerian government have come again to kill our people. They have declared war against our people. You might not see it, but they have already sent in their missionaries, the, the, the military personnel they want, they are already in our land. Therefore, we are calling all IPOB members. Wherever you are, you have to be very careful. Whether you're a principal officer, you're an IPOB member, do not be afraid of the enemy. Make sure you are not afraid of the enemy. You must stand up any of those people. If you realize those people pointing fingers at you people, you do not need to talk too much. Make sure you get their information. It is as they are pointing hands at you, get their information also and report to the nearest coordinator. Because they cannot be in our land. And they are conniving with a foreigners. They should know that. All of them that are in Ebubago, put in your mind that you are conniving with the invaders. You are conniving with foreigners. You are conniving with the Islamists in our land to kill our own people. We know that most of us will die, but at the end we know Biafra will come. It is just a matter of time. What we are doing, we know what we are doing. The restoration of Biafra is something that nobody can stop. They can decide to arrest people, but it's only very unfortunate that many people they are arresting are people who are not even IPOB members. They are just Biafrans, maybe Biafra sympathizers. That is why we ask people to belong to IPOB, so that when there is danger, you can understand. 
not you go in the street, you talk. I know everybody will not be in IPOD, but you have to be very, very careful. This, the country is not good. Our land is under siege by the Islamists. They have inserted their people, drafted all their police, every new country of Biafra land. But the question is this. After all this, will they be able to defeat us? And we said no. As long as this generation of the IPODs are present, this generation, we will teach Nigeria a lesson they have never learned before. We will teach them that it doesn't matter the population that only those who believe in the name of Tupoki Kadiyama will restore this nation called Biafra. They, ha they think they can do anything. They have adopted many of our people they are missing. And one thing I have to tell every one of you, most of the governors are not in control of what is happening in our land. Every one of you must know that. That none of them is in control of what is happening in our land. The governor will be there, they will pick somebody and kill him. The governor has no power. He can't even question the army. He can't even question the police. That is to show you that you are on your own. You can see that just the southern governors gathered together to, to declare, to ban open grazing in the south. It, you see how they are being threatened, the left and right. Everybody being threatened in them. Another people I am going to talk about is Yeso Wike. Yeso Wike have gathered all the people that Ateke Tom was using. All the court people they were using, they have used them now and they recruited in where they recruited them in Ospark. The court, the team of Donwani, the guy that Yeso Wike killed. Most of the boys he were pursuing now, Yeso Wike have returned all of them. He now he now bring all of them together to work with the military. Yes, so we can have asked them to hunt IPOB members down in Biafra land, in, in Iwacha. But the question was, so we can, all you are doing, you cannot deny all you are doing in Iwacha against Igbos. The Igbo Biafrans that are living in Iwacha. You have given a command, you ask them, that is why you bring all those criminals. You want to use them to pacify the killing of Don Wani. You are the one who killed Don Wani. Most of the boys ran away. Now you have gathered them with the cult of uh, Ateke Tom. You have gathered all of them now and bring them in horse park. They are going house to house, killing IPOB members. And you think we don't know? The army and the police, they have all joined together with cult people to kill their friends in their own land. One thing is this, yes or we when things will happen, you will come and say they kill security people. So these their friends they are killing. Are they not human beings? Yes or we can. All these people that the Nigerian police and security are killing on daily basis. We are asking you, are they not human beings? Yes or we can. Are these people their friends you are killing in all people? Are they not human beings? One thing is sure. You may boast. You may pay people to do what they will do. But there are people in life you can never lay your hands on them. Instead, they will lay their hands on you. Yes, Omike, IPOB will never forgive you wherever you are. Hope those of them, IPOB members will never forgive you wherever you are. Till hope those of them will live and die. His leg will never step anywhere IPOB members are living. Anywhere. I don't want to talk about Joe Ibope. Our people, I, Igbo people in Lagos should know what to do to Joe Ibope. Anywhere they see Joe Ibope, where he walks on the streets of Lagos, anywhere there must be a mob action against Joe Ibope. Joe Ibope have the audacity to come on Facebook and say that anywhere IPOB member says that he should be killed. The house should be destroyed. There should be. I. We are urging all IPOB members. It is a challenge. We should mob Joey Bokwe as a common criminal in the street of Lagos. If we do not do it, let the heaven and earth fall. For those of them making indiscriminative state statement that they will do us this and do us that, we are also working for you. We are working to get you. But one thing is, if we do not teach some of people a lesson like Joy Bokwe in Lagos, 
it is a slap on IPOD. Every IPOD member, wherever you are, Joey Bokwe coming on air to say that we should be killed in Lagos. That anywhere they see IPOD member, anywhere he is sitting, anywhere they have meeting, that they should kill the person, destroy the building, and demolish the place. IPOD members worldwide, this is a challenge against us. We must protect our people in Lagos. Joey Bokwe must be hunted down in Lagos. In the marketplace, in the church place, anybody who tries to protect Joy Bokwe will go down with Joy Bokwe. We will mock Joy Bokwe down like a common criminal on the street of Lagos. He came home the other time. He was making mouth. This stupid Joy Bokwe, during the MSAS, he was calling telephone, begging, thinking that he will be hunted down in Lagos. Now he has developed new wings. And now he has come to tell us that we should be killed in Lagos. Everybody should know that. That Joe Ibokwe was calling and begging. Joe Ibokwe was calling when the answers was happening in Lagos. He was calling and begging that his life should be spared. He was calling ITOB and begging. Asking that he want to give some money to beg. ITOB told him to hell. Now Joe Ibokwe has come back. To say now that IPOB members should be killed in Lagos. If IPOB Lagos do not take it as a challenge, IPOB worldwide is taking this as a challenge. We must hunt down Joey Bope. We must hunt down Jesu Wike, Hope, who's on them, and all these governors who have taken it as a challenge to kill IPOB members. Hope, who's on them, cannot run and go anywhere. He can never hide anywhere. Hope of them man will continue to run. He will never have peace until the death of all the people killed in Imo State. We revenge all of them. They have killed a lot of people in Imo State. Right now, when they catch you, they will just say you are one of those unknown gunmen. That is just the, that is their new their new tactics and their new way. Anybody they catch, they say he's the new IPOB, he's one of the one of the IPOB members. They caught somebody in late in Abuja, a man who deal with court people. They catch you, they say that is their new terminology, that is their new accusation on anybody. You are part of ESN. They will drop guns in front of you and they claim you are ESN. The world should know this. Hope of them, ma. You can never run away from your land. All the people you have killed, we will never forgive you. Not today, not tomorrow. Above all, dear friends, I want to assure every one of you there are dear friends all over the world who are hell-bent that we must restore Biafra. Those at home must be have their... You, your faith must continue. Do not be afraid of anything they are doing. When the movie about is to end, that is when you see a lot of killings, a lot of, a lot of gunshots. That is what is happening right now. And I'm calling everyone, every IPOB member, rise up. Do not be afraid of the enemy. It is your duty to seek past information, accurate information. Let us stop all the fake information some of you are using to deceive others. Give us accurate information what is happening in your place. The radio is always working. You people have many, many ways to disseminate information. We are calling upon you, all the villages, all the places the Nigerian military are harassing people. Do not, do not forget or do not neglect to share the experience or whatever they do in your village bring it up we will look into it we the motive of everything we are doing is to restore Biafra and remove the full and men terrorist people in our land that is our motive and we have we we have assured them that full and men will never operate in our land unless this generation of Biafras are not alive even if it takes us more, more two, three years, we will make sure no fool any haste may 
will operate in Biafra land. It is a promise, it is not a threat. Our doors have been open for them. They have been doing their business in our land for many years until they trigger the killing of our people, killing of our mothers, raping our sisters, destroying our farms. And when you talk, because they feel they are in the government, but I know by the time we finish this battle with them, we finish this struggle with them, they will know indeed that IPOB was choosing to come and defend this Biafra kingdom. They can never in their life take hold of our land. They can take the land of other people, but they can never invade and take over our land. That land belongs to us. It is something everybody must rise up and understand. It is not the time to pray. If you are praying, make sure you have your knife. You are praying, make sure you have your gun. While you are praying, if anything happens, you open your eye and you defend yourself. That is what everybody is supposed to do. I do not want to talk about pastors. I know some pastors are already praying for the restoration of Biafra. We know that many of them are also in support of the restoration of Biafra. And what we are saying is rise up, support this and stop making unguarded statements against the restoration of Biafra. If Biafra comes today, it is we and you, it is our children. Some of us fighting this battle may not be able to see Biafra, but most of you, we are fighting it so that your children and our own children will have a future, will not have a place they will call their own place. Mazia Lozier, this is all I have this afternoon to talk to our people. I do not know if you have any question to ask me. Oh, yes, yes oh, I am. Oh, Thank yes, you. I do. First, I'm waiting for you to finish. Um, yes. There was um, a comment somebody made. It was, uh, um, I couldn't play because of where I'm at. Um, it's somebody from Emekuku. Um, two of them. They were saying the role Uzodemba is playing in Oweri. And then, upon all that is happening, the Odudu West are leaving. The middle bed living. Where will somebody like Uzodemba go and start? Again, in Emekuku, they are confiscating, in people, yeah, in yes. confiscating people's land La. for their own project. And they will tell you it's Emekuku, it's a Ruga. What do you, what do you think about that? Mazaloze, ma, 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 I, I want to say something. There is something many people do not know about Hope Uzodemma. Hope Uzodemma is, a, I don't know how I would put it, he's a celebrated slave for the Fulani Caliphate. Many people found Hope Uzodemma for Hope Uzodemma to be picked as a from fourth position to make him a governor in Imo State. It was because of his past record. Hope Uzodemma, the oil that was found in Oru, it was it was Hope Uzodemma who handed the document over. Hope Uzodemma was behind the death of Obren Eluwa. I don't know, many people from Imo State may know about him from Umbidi. Hope Uzodemma, there is a brother of Obren that Hope Uzodemma deceived. He took those documents, those oil documents, they, when they were playing 419, Hope Uzodemma poisoned that guy. Ucheka or Eloka, there is a name. From that particular moment, Obren Eluwa married to the younger sister of Yaradua, which is Salamatu. She is the APC woman leader the whole of Nigeria. Hope Uzodemma, that lady is her concubine. It's a Hope Uzodemma concubine. So Hope Uzodemma have done things for the Fulani Caliphate. So he is, a, he is ready to die for them. Hope Uzodemma is not on his own. Everything is being controlled from the Fulanis. Because he is the one, it was when he handed over, the money he handed over, the documents of that oil in Oru West he handed, when he came into Senate, that was why they helped him and divided Oru, I think Oru West and Oru, Oru, Oru East. So, Hopu Zodema, no matter anything people can say, they ban. He will never, because he is following instruction from the Lord. If they like, they go to South. He is the one 
they've gone to south uh, the south and say there is no open reason he will go and do his own separately if not that hope was the man was attacked he never attended any meeting in the southeast he never talk less of south south so whatever that happens even if everybody bans and this thing hope who's or them because his instruction comes from the north and he want to be a perfect slave so he will try to implement it as fast as he can he will put every effort but what we are asking i love what the, our people our youth do there nobody should offer land to fulani people the one given to them in law panta it's already a menace so nobody nobody everybody must resist what we are saying that full and me if they want a business if they want let them come inside the house let them come inside the cities and live they should not take over our bushes that is the most important thing um, so hope was the man will always serve the north he will always um, thank you Mazalosia. yeah china sir our fight is uh, global and uh, uh, people don't realize uh, what we are fighting uh, against uh, we are being wiped out systematically uh, there's something i'll play to you because our people are too keen listening to these um, enslaved governors that are in turn enslaving our people and their frustration is that biafra is coming and since biafra is coming it is going to stop them from achieving their goal uh, listen to this clip very very carefully and I, I hope our people will listen to it together with you so that when we are fighting for Biafra they will know why we are fighting just listen okay watch this video and see how evil these people are you will hear this yourself I just want you watch so aids all of this uh, for the uh, yes yeah, so for the sterilization and, and population control there's too many people on the planet we need to get rid of in the words of bill gates at least three billion people need to die so we'll just start off in africa we'll start doing our research there and we'll eliminate eliminate most most of the africans because they're deplorable they're worthless they're not part of this world economy so they have their rights taken away and they're suppressed and they're experimented and the multilateral agencies and the health and regulatory so-called authorities and agencies appear in the main to have become weaponized and appear I again use the word appear advisedly uh, we're not casting judgments here we're taking depositions listening to expert testimonies do you hear that do you um did you hear did you hear what those people were saying and this, yeah, they, they, yeah. this they are taking uh, testimonies from experts yes where they say we are hopeless we are useless yes. and need to get rid of us in billions yes. and does our africans uh, especially from the zoo do you do do us do are they aware of this plan the middle belt are they aware of this plan we be france we are aware of this plan is this not a uh, a sort of incentive for the duduas to get out and make sure that oduduas survive and not fall victim to this plot is it not wise for the middle belt to listen to this and fall out of that zoo because the british people are the ones forming this that's when when whatever is happening in in nigeria they are the ones formulating it and this is part of their plan what do you think about that yeah, um, uh, what i can tell you is this the oduduwas are waking up the younger generation of oduduwas have realized that there is a need that oduduwa nation must stand and if they can be able to achieve the oduduwa nation they will be more progressive they will even secure their own people more than being in Nigeria. And I can tell you also, the middle belt, many of them are already waking up. They are waking up. But I, I can tell you, there was a time I was speaking to one of them. He told me, you know, the problem is this. We have been, 
you know, most of the youth has been um, um, grounded that they don't even think. They don't know where to start because for anything they want, they have made them dependent only on their political leaders. Then you come down to Biafra land, Mazen Namdekano and IPOB have awakened that curiosity in us to ask questions. And these questions are questions they don't know how to answer. One thing people have to know is this. Biafra, whether the middle belt decide to go or they don't want to go, we are now conscious of the problem we are having. They can plan whatever they want to plan. That is why when things happen in our place, nobody wants to hear our voices. IPOB is screaming everywhere. They kidnap. But the British and this Western world, I mean, let me call them the slave masters, they have decided to press our voices down. They don't want our voices to be heard. They don't want us to have a equal status with other people. They believe because the things in our land, the mineral resources in our land, this is what they all want to benefit. And for that reason, they can do anything possible to put us down. I can tell you something, Maja Lozier. It is all these things that they have made us, you know, everybody is looking outward. We don't look inward. For example, look at Ambazonia. Look at Biafra. Do you know that to go from Calabar to Ambazonia, it costs you like 1,500 Naira? If everything is okay, there is no problem. 1,500 Naira. But you see our people leaving Calabar, leaving these places, going to Sokoto, going to Kanu, going to Kaduna. What are you looking in the desert? This is the way they have tried to brainwash our people that we don't see anything good in our land. But the presence of Mazen Namdekano and the coming of IPOB and the Radio Biafra and all the things everybody, those who have been working up, what they are doing is what is delivering us from this bondage. The Western world can plan anything they want. After all, British planned it against India. After all, British planned it against, they planned it in many places, they colonized. But people are still having their freedom. After all, British didn't want South Sudan to, 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 to go their way. Today, they have gone. British have played many roles. They were, but one thing is that if we don't give them a fight, they won't let us go. We must be ready. They are not smarter than us. They are not brave, more than brave than us. The only thing is for us to understand that we are fighting for the next generation. We are fighting for our land. And the moment everybody has this in his mind, then you know all the things they are planning against us will all fail. But if we decided that we will continue to, you know, uh, behave like I don't care, nothing is happening, then their plans will all succeed in our land. But for me personally, this generation of their friends and this generation of Ududua people, we are going to break these genes. And I hope everybody, those who have never joined the trend, will wake up and make this journey a more successful one. Yes, um, the last question I'll ask you um, to shed the light on uh, the plight of our people. We have instructions being given out and people fail to heed to instructions what can you attribute to this because what i'm looking at is lack of information and why when there is information and there is lack of it why is there lack of information on our people whereas we have the information out there will it be called out of stupidity or what Mazalozi, it is not lack of information. I can tell you, um, IPOD and Mazen Namdekano have, we have devised many means. We communicate people through WhatsApp groups. We communicate people through Facebook, through social media, other social media platforms, through radio, through BTV. There are many ways we are communicating to our people. And IPOB have a structure down to the grassroots. So if anybody is saying it is lack of communication, I will disagree. But I can say there are two things I, I, I am looking into. There are moles inside IPOB, and there are people in subordination. Sometimes 
people do not want to take information they put themselves outcast they, even if the coordinator or their superior officer pass information to them they will put it there they don't want it to you know to trickle down to the grassroots now when things are, he forgets that if problem comes everybody now will come to hear about it and on that process he tried to defend himself that he don't know it is not that he doesn't know they know for example, let me give you an example. If anybody who is in IPOD knows that our leader said there is no meeting in Biafra land. There is no, do not, there is no meeting. But some people as this stubbornly want to organize a meeting, call people for a meeting. This is, do you understand me? This is, uh, um, uh, this is insubordination. And this is either he's a mole because he want to put the life of our people in danger. Because people will want to attend the meeting thinking he's a coordinator. Either he's a mole, he want to break sell our people, or his insubordination is putting the life of our people at risk. In IPOD, information passes very fast. I can assure you that we have the platform we disseminate information, go to the villages, go to people are getting information. So I, I don't believe information are not going, but our people intentionally, some are selling their own brothers, some are out of stupidity and insubordination, they are risking the life of others. And this is what we don't like. For example, people, our leader have said it from time immemorial, do not count, do not put people's data. He knows before this day that such a thing will happen. Because when they catch you and see people's data, they have information. They will start looking for people. That is why we say there is no, don't collect people's data, pictures and all this thing, because he knows the day will come when they will look for our people, where they live, who is their mother, who is that. He knows that. So I do not agree. It is like we are passing, IPOBs have drawn a tremendous job in disseminating information in Biafra land and all over the world. People have heard our story and we continue to push for more information until every Biafran, wherever you are in the farm, inside the thick village, hunters, everybody will always have the right information wherever he or she is residing. Thank you, Maza Lozier. Uh, thank you, Chinasa. We'll do this again either this week or next week. Um, um, thank you. We'll thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.